Okay. I think we are now on the way to go. So today we're going to learn uh, the basic skills of how to solve bivariate uh, distribution where we have X and Y variable. And I call this session 6.1 because it's just an extension of the session we did on Saturday. So some of the things we did on Saturday, we're going to also use them today, but um, not everything because not all of it, but yeah, most of the concepts we used, we're still going to apply them today. I'm not going to ask you about question and answer by the end of this session for now. You should be able to know how to calculate the expected value of an X and Y by varied variable or be able to calculate the variance, the covariance and how to describe the bivariate distribution. So <clears throat> when we work with bivariate distribution, there are other things that uh, when you're working with univariate, you don't have to worry about. For example, like um, you need to know about the expected uh, value, uh, uh, the law of expected value, because when you work with uh, one univariate um, problem, it's easy to calculate the expected value and you are it's easy to also interpret that the minute you have a bivariate variable and they ask you to calculate the expected value of x and y where they say you need to calculate the expected value of x plus y then you need to know how to solve that as well so if a is a constant number not a variable. A variable is like your x, y, and z um, are your placeholders. So if a is any number, which will be a constant number, let's say a number like 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 100,000, those are constant numbers. And x and y are any random variables that we can assign. If we need to find the expected value of a constant, it will be the value of a constant. So the expected value of E of, of two. So if I need to find the expected value of two, it will be it will still remain as two. If I need to find the expected value of two times X, then I must take out the constant and find the expected value of the variable. So that will be two times the expected value of X and you know how to find the expected value of a random variable, right? We know that the expected value of a random variable, we can write it as the sum of your, ex your outcome times its corresponding probability. And you can apply that formula and answer the questions. If I have the expected value of a constant plus a variable, the answer will be we need to split it into two. So this is the same as finding the expected value of a constant plus the expected value of a variable, which we know that the expected value of a constant is C. Therefore, it will remain C and the expected value of a variable. You can find that. So it's the same as finding the expected value of three plus X. And that will be the same as three plus the expected value of X. Finding the expected value of a variable X plus variable Y, it will be the same as expected value of variable X plus the variable, uh, the expected value of variable Y. I don't even have to go and explain it further. The other rule or, or law that you also need to know is always remember when you calculate in the, var um, the variance, especially when you get the bivariate as well, the bivariate uh, random variables. So in terms of the, um, the variance as well, if, uh, sorry for about that, if, if C is still our constant, so to calculate the variance of a constant will be equal to zero because there won't be any variance on that. So that variance will be equal to zero. So the same as if I need to find the variance of 100, it will be zero. If I need to find the variance of two, it will be zero. <clears throat> Finding the variance of a constant plus a variable, 
will be the same as finding the um, the variance of a variable. So if I have the variance of 2 plus x, and that will be the same as the variance of 2 plus the variance of x, which is the same as we know that 2 is a constant, it will be 0, which will just be the same as the variance of x. Finding the variance of a constant times a variable. Now, this one is little different to the expected value. So we need to take out the, um, the constant, but square the answer. So for example, if I need to find the variance of 3x, therefore is the same as 3 to the power of 2 times the variance of x, which will be 3 to the power of 2 is 9, variance of x. And that's how you will find the variance. And if you're going to find the variance of a bivariate variable, then where we have x plus y, the variance of x plus y will be uh, creating the variance of individual variable and adding them together. So the variance of x plus the variance of y, and this is only applicable if and only if x and y are independent. If they are not independent, therefore, the variance of x plus y will be the same as the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y. So you need to make sure that x and y are independent in order to use that formula, the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y. And we're going to look at what, how do we calculate the covariance at a later stage now. So this comes from one of your study guide. Let's see if we can apply the same knowledge that we just learned now. If x is any random variable, some of the following, um, some of the following identities are not true. So let's go with number A. Without looking at the answers, because we need to determine whether the answer is true or false. So what is the expected value of uh, the expected value of E times X plus two? We know from the previous section, the expected value of X plus two, two is a constant. I'm just going to do one and then you guys do the rest. That will be the expected value of X plus the expected value of 2, which is the same as the expected value of x plus 2, right? Remember, the expected value of a constant is that constant. Do the variance plus 2. What is the variance? x plus 2. How do you find that? If you want, I can go back one step, even though let me make it like this and I must just remove the animation. Just give me a second. And go back. So remember, the variance of a constant plus an x is the same as the variance of x. And remember also, let's come back here. The variance of a constant, uh, the expected value of a constant plus x is the same as the constant plus the expected value of a variance of the uh, variable x. Okay. Number B, are you done? Number B is correct. Number B will be correct because here we find in the variance of X plus the variance 
of, of the constant. constant, and we know that the variance of a constant is zero, so that will zero. be variance of x, and that is the true one. And the expected value of 4x minus 6, do you still remember? If it's the expected value of a constant multiplying the variance, the, the variable, and what will be minus the expected value of a constant? I think it's correct. Okay. It is correct because when we find the expected value of a constant multiplying by the variance, we multiply with the constant and find the expected value of a variable minus the expected value of a constant, and we know that the expected value of a constant is the same as the const, con, um, constant. So that is also correct. Number D, is that correct? Uh, find the variance of 4x minus 6. Remember with the variance, you will have to multiply with the square of the constant and finding the, the variance of a constant it's equals to zero. The first part is right. I'm not sure about the plus 36. The plus 36 is the incorrect part because you mm. will find the variance will be 4 squared variance mm. of x minus the variance of 6. And we know that the variance it's of zero. it's 0, so that will be 16 variance of x. So this one is incorrect. It's not true. And let's move on to the sec number E. Find the variance of minus 4x plus 6. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Ah, find the variance. That is not correct as well because uh, this is minus 4x squared. So we're going to square minus 4 squared. Variance of x plus the variance of 6, which then it will be 16 variance of x, and that is 0. So pay attention to that as well. So D and E are the incorrect ones. Okay. Miss pa uh, Miss Oss Elizabeth, mm. why is E incorrect? Because the, the variance of a constant becomes a zero. Yeah. The minus minus sixteen. You need to square minus. Oh you square it. Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. Okay. Yes, I see that. Minus four times minus four is six. Yes. It won't be a negative. Mm -hmm. Okay. You also need to know how to calculate the covariance, which is the strength or the measure of strength of the relationship between the two variables, your x and y. And you can use this formula to calculate. I'm not going to do an example or anything 
when we do the example from the uh, the marginal probabilities and the joint probabilities, I'm going to show you how to use these formulas. Um, so you will need to use the formula to calculate the strength of the relationship by using this formula as your covariance. So this they mean one and the same thing. So this is the covariance. Covariance, you can write it in that manner. The first one is the longest method which says the sum of your observation minus the mean of that observation. So the mean of X, because you will create marginal probabilities and multiply it with uh, Y, uh, the outcome of Y minus its corresponding um, expected value times the corresponding probability of X and Y. And we're going to look at how do we get the, the uh, how do we get the probability of X and Y, which is your joint probabilities as well. And the second one is the more simplified um, formula, which is, gives you the um, expected, the, 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 the covariance by finding the sum of the sum of your X times Y times the probability of X and Y. Uh, which is the pro the probability of the joint minus the mean of X times the mean of Y. You can use either one of them. They will still give you the same answer. And this is how you will find the sample covariance, which you don't have to worry too much about that formula as well. In terms of the covariance, so because it tells you about the, the strength of a relationship, if your covariance value is greater than zero, then it means it's, co uh, it's got a positive relationship or it's positively correlated. If it's less than zero, which is in the negative, then it is negatively correlated or it has a negative relationship. And if it's equals to zero, therefore there is no relationship. And you can also use the, uh, the strength in terms of whether is it a weak one or a strong one or a moderate one. You don't have to worry too much about the rest. OK, so now let's go into the joint probabilities. In the previous session that you attended, we were working with only one variable, the univariable, univariate, which is the X. Now we have X and Y. So in order for us to find the expected value, the joint marginal probabilities, the variance, or calculate the probability of X plus Y or the expected value of X plus Y, we need to do certain things. The other thing you need to know and remember that the probabilities are lie between 0 and 1, and the sum of all probabilities should always be equals to 1. That is what you have learned from the last time. Let's look at this example. Sharon and Julie are sales, lab, they were sales reps at Gary dealership. Let's X denote the number of cars um, Sharon will sell in a month and let Y denote the number of cars Julie will sell in a month. An analysis of their past monthly performance has the following joint probabilities. And this is the joint probabilities that they gave us, which is your contingency table, which has your um, X values of Sharon at the top and on the left, the Y values of Julius on the left hand side. And they have zero, one, two cars and the probabilities that correspond to their joint probabilities as well. So in order to answer question relating to bivariate, you need to know one, the step one is to unpack the table and calculate the marginal probabilities. Marginal probabilities are like your totals here. Totals, we call them marginal probabilities. In basic probability, we call them simple probabilities. They are one and the same thing. And to get them, you just add the rows. If it's for the columns, you just add the columns and create the totals. Those are your marginal probabilities. OK, so we're going to do that. So that's step number one and step number two. Then we can 
once we have the marginal probabilities, then we can calculate the expected value of X, the expected value of Y, and we can also calculate the standard deviation of X and standard deviation of Y. And we can also calculate the covariance of X and Y, because we cannot separate them, the covariance of X and Y. And we need to find also, we can also move forward and calculate the, uh, and find the probability distribution of X plus Y, which means recreate the table, but on, um, as an X plus Y uh, table. So let's see how do we do that. So the first thing that we can do on this is to calculate the marginal probabilities. Like I said, marginal probabilities. So this side, we will do the probability of X on this side, because X is at the top on the rows. We will add all of them at add. And on this side, we're going to calculate the marginal probabilities of Y because we're going to add the rows. So let's add the, the columns first. 0 0.12 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.01 is 0 0.40, right? 2 plus 4 plus 4 is 10. Carry one is five. That is zero point five zero. Ten. Zero point one zero. And you can do the same with the Y column or Y row. Are we done? Yes. Okay, what is the for zero? Zero comma six zero. Zero comma six zero. And for one? Zero comma three zero. Zero comma three zero. And the last one? 0, 10. 0, 0. So now we have the marginal probabilities and we can go and create the same discrete table, this um, discrete uh, variable table that we we learned on Saturday. So we can create the X and its corresponding probability on the side. So this is to answer number one. Can do this. Zero, one, two. So this is to answer number one. <clears throat> and we have 0 0.40, 0 0.50, and 0 0.10. And we can answer number two as well because number two says we need to find the marginal probability. So we do the same. Zero, one, two, and this is our Y. And this is the probability of Y. And we found that it's 0 0.60. 0 0.30 and 0 0.10. Can you see how easy it is? Now we do have the marginal probabilities. We can calculate number three says calculate the mean and the standard deviation. <clears throat> I'm going to go and do one. You can do the Y on your own. So let's do the X. So I'll do X. So number three, right? We need to find the expected value which is the sum of your x times 
your probability. X times the probability of X. Now we do have that, which is zero times 0 0.4 plus 1 times 0 0.5 plus 2 times 0 .0 0 0.1, which is 0 plus 0 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2 zero which then it equals to 0 0.25 so i do have my expected value so you can go if that will be your homework you can do it outside of this you can go and calculate your expected value or you, you can do it now but we're gonna run out of time I'm going to give you, oh, it's still three. I'm going to give you time to do that. It's fine. We'll end at, 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 at six. The expected value of Y, you just need to do the sum of Y times the probability of Y. So you just use this table here. <coughs> I'm going to give you some time to do that when. Okay, do you have the answer? I'll just write. So it is. It is zero comma zero times. Zero times zero comma six zero. Plus one times zero comma three zero. Mm -hmm. Plus two times zero point one zero. Okay. And that is zero plus zero point three zero plus zero comma two zero comma two zero, which is equals to zero comma five zero. Zero. Zero comma five. Five zero. So we have our expected value. We need to calculate the standard deviation. We know that the standard deviation. Before we do the standard deviation for the mean of X, mm. the answer there, the, the 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2, would that be 0 0.70? Huh? Yes, I, I calculated it wrong this. Thanks. It's 0 0.70. Yes, you're right. Oh, sorry about that. Yes, fixed it. Okay, so now let's do the X, uh, the standard deviation. So we know that the standard deviation 
for X will be given by the square root of the sum of your X observation minus the expected X squared times the corresponding probability of X. Therefore, that will be the square root of our, it will be zero minus 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.4 plus 1 minus 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.5 plus 2 minus 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.1 and you can do the entire thing. I'm not going to do one by one by one by one. I'll use the case you. Are you winning? I am doing everything, including the square root. And let me know what answer do you get. OK, I got my answer. And what is your answer? Uh, it's point two one four. Oh, but I didn't well, take the square root. Yeah, take the square root because I don't have enough space. I'm <laughs> going to use up all the, the things. So take the, the square, square root. root would be 0.4626-0134. No, which, are you, are you sure you're calculating the variance? Uh, doing everything and taking the square root, the answer you should get should be 0, 0,64 if I round it to two decimal. Double check your numbers. Can we do them again? Did you do them one by one? And you must make sure that if you if you're using your calculator and you're doing all of them at the same time, make sure that um, <clears throat> make sure that you you include the brackets as well or use the multiplication because the answer of everything that is underneath the bracket uh, underneath the square root should be something like zero point four one. And if you take the square root of that it's, answer. 
it should give you zero comma. Yes, six four zero three one two four two three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can also do the same with the with the y. So we need to find the standard deviation of y, which then it is the square root of the sum of your y value minus the expected mean of y squared times its corresponding probability, which is the square root of zero minus zero point five squared times zero point six plus one minus zero point five squared times zero point three plus two minus zero point five squared times 0 0.1 and we can go and find the value underneath the square root And you should get 0 0.45, 0 0.45. And if you take the square root of 0 0.45. 0 0.67. 0 0.67. So you still remember all these values? Uh, since I ran out of space here, let's go and do the next one. Remember that we just covered Number one, number two, number three, we need to do number number four, which is the covariance. Now with the covariance, I need enough space. So the formula for the covariance. Um, the covariance of X and Y. I'm going to use the easy one that I can still remember is the sum of your x minus the expected times y minus the expected times its corresponding pro probability of x and y. Let's see if I if I'm writing it right. Yes, I am writing it right. Okay. So what it means, it says we're going to say, for example, if we take we start with the x on this side, so it will say um zero minus you still remember what our expected value for x is and our expected value for y do we remember those is 0 0.6 uh, 0 0.7 and 0 0.5 0 0.7 and 0 0.5 because we need them so we say uh, 0 minus 0 0.7 we'll start first with the x1 and then go to the y which is 0 as well minus 0 0.5 it will be a long calculation multiply by its joint probability which is 0 comma 1 2 multiply by 0 comma 1 2 
plus we go to two to number one. One says uh, uh, okay, how do we do this one now? So we started with this. Now we come here. So this on here it will have two values. So it's zero and one, right? So that will be one minus zero comma seven times zero minus zero comma five times the corresponding probability, which is zero comma four two plus. I'm gonna go to the bottom. We come to two two with this corresponding probability corresponds to y of zero and two x of 2, so it will be 2 minus 0 0.7 times 0 minus 0 0.5 times the corresponding probability of 0 comma 0 0.06 plus. Then we come to the second row, which corresponds to 0 and 1. So that will be 0 minus 0 comma 7 times 1 minus 0, 0,5 times the corresponding probability. Uh, am I on the right track? No, I'm on the wrong one. It should be with 0, 1. Uh, sorry, it's 0 and 1. Each, yeah, I'm on the right track, which is 0, 0,21. 0, 0,21. Plus, now we go to this one, which x is 1 minus 0, 0,7 and our y is 1 minus 0, 0,7 uh, 0, 0,5 times the corresponding probability which is 0, 0, 0,06 plus we come this one 2 minus 0, 0,7 times 1 minus 0, 0,5 times the corresponding probability, which is 0, 0,3 plus. It's a long calculation. Um, and we can say on this one, it's 0 minus 0, 0,7 and 2 minus 0, 0,5 corresponding probability 0, 0,07 plus 1 minus 0, 0,7 times 2 2 minus 0, 0,5 mm -hmm. and the corresponding will be 0, 0,02. Mm -hmm. And then the last one. That is 2 minus 0, 0,7. Mm -hmm. And also 2 minus 0, 0,5. Mm -hmm. Times 0, 0,01. Yes, and then you can sure. just calculate all of them. I'm going to save you a whole lot of time. tell you what that is. And there is no shortcut to this calculation. <gasps> no, there is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. The answer you will get will be minus minus 0, 0,15. Or here is the other easy one that you can use. Remember, let's go find that the easy formula. The sum sum of x and y and the corresponding probability minus mean of x mean of y. Okay. So this one it's it looks easy but it's also a little bit of uh, complexity to it. X and y 
we say is the sum sum of all the x values and all the y values of x and y times the joint probability of x and y minus the expected of x times the expected of y. So this one, you need to first solve this part first because the summation does not include those two. This, uh, the um, expected value of x times the expected value of y, you can just take those two because this is the same as 0, 0,7 times 0, 0,5. So that one you can calculate. The only part that is complex is on this side. So now on that side, what you need to do, because it says it is X times Y, so it means we need to multiply X and Y and its corresponding probability. So we're going to say zero times zero multiply by the corresponding probability plus uh, 0 times 1, n is corresponding probability, plus, like that. So let's, let's do it here. Do I want to write it on here? Let's write it on here. We'll come back to this later on. We'll come back to, to this part. So we'll come back to the formula later on. So we know that eventually we need to calculate the covariance of X and Y, which is the sum sum of X and Y times its corresponding joint probability of X and Y minus the expected of X times the expected of Y. So let's, let's solve this one first here. So the sum sum of x and y times the joint probabilities will be given by 0 times 0, 0 times 0 times 0 0.12 plus 0 times 1 times 0. 2 plus 0, 0 times 2 times 0 0.06 plus and we go to the next line or not equal just the next which is 0 um, it's 1 times 0 since I'm using the y axis 1 times 0, 1 times 0 times the corresponding probability, which is 0 0.21 plus 1 times 1, 0 0.06 times 0 0.06 plus 1 times 2, Plus times zero point zero three zero three plus two times zero zero times zero point zero seven zero seven plus two times one two times one times zero point zero two plus two times two two times two times 0 0.01 and you go and find the answer which will be which will be 0 0.3 and that will be let me write it closer to the numbers 0 0.0.2 0 so now Let's use our formula because I don't want to rewrite it. So we know what this value is. It is 0 0.2 minus, and did we calculate 0 0.7 times 0 
what is the answer? That's 0 0.35. 0 0.2 minus 0 0.35, which will be minus 0 0.15, right? Right? Okay, so that is how you will calculate the, the values. Maybe let's do one last thing. Maybe we can finish at quarter past. Just give me a second while you still double checking your answers. So you're done with instruments? Yes. Okay. So you're done with instruments. The only thing that you did today was instruments. Yes. What happened to? Because I had a whole lot of homework. But I did, if you finished long time ago, that means then you. I I had at least nine or ten pages to do for instrument. All right, so let's do one last thing relating to need to duplicate one of these. I'm going to discard because we do have and then I'm going to. So let's create uh, way is the other one. Find the probability of um distribution of x plus y so now how you do that i'm gonna use this site how you do that we have all at this table right so we go into add because we want to create a table that looks like this x plus y because we're creating a distribution table with its corresponding probability of x plus y. So it means we need to determine what are the variable, the outcomes, that possible outcomes that will be. So in order to for you to complete that table like this, you're going to add those two, x plus, x plus y. And when you add x plus y, you must also 
add the prob the probabilities. So the first one we're going to do is say zero plus zero because it's x plus y. Zero plus zero is zero, right? And the corresponding probability of that is zero comma one two. I'm just gonna write it like that. The next one is one plus zero, which is one, and the corresponding probability will be zero comma four two. And the next one, two plus zero is two, and the corresponding probability is zero comma six. Oslezi, we can't see what you are writing. Oh, I didn't share my screen. No. And now? Yes, we can see now. Oh. Okay. Because I mm -hmm. deleted the thing here now. Let's do this. I'm going to get it back here so that you can see. Let's share. Sorry about that. I thought I am sharing my screen. Okay. So let's, let's look at that. So what I'm saying is if we need to find the probability of X plus Y, so we want to end up with a table that looks like this, which is the marginal, uh, the distribution, which has X plus Y, and also the probability that correspond to X plus Y. That's what we want to do. And we need to identify the values that will form part of the outcomes. So we're going to add x plus y, x plus y. But when we do that, we also need to add the probability that corresponds to those things. So the first one is 0 plus 0 is 0. And the corresponding probability of, or the joint probability there is 0 0.12. The next one is 1 plus 0 is 1, and the corresponding probability is 0 0.42. The next one is 2 plus 0. The corresponding probability of 2 will be 0, 0,06. Now we move to the second row of y. 0 plus y and the corresponding probability. So 0 plus 1 is 1. I'm not going to write 1 again because I have already 1. So I can write the corresponding probability of 0 and 1, which is 0, 0,21. 0, 0,21. And then I go to the next one. 1 plus 1, plus one is 2. And the corresponding probability is 0, 0,06. 0, 0,06. And the next one is 2 plus 1 which is equals to 3, so I can write 3 because I don't have a 3. And the corresponding probability is 0, 0, 0,03. I'm just going to write it on the same line. Then we go to the next one, which is the last one. 0 plus 2 is 2, and the corresponding probability is 0, 0,7. And 1 plus 2 is 3, and the corresponding probability is 0, 0,02. And the last one, 2 plus 2 is 4. We don't have a 4. We can write that outcome. And the corresponding probability is 0, 0,01. Now, all I need to do is add all the probabilities underneath there, because I know that this one is x, x plus 1 x plus y values and therefore here I'm going to have my x plus y probabilities. So yeah, we'll have, I just bring it down because there is nothing to add there and here I must just bring it down which will be 3, 6, 0, 6, 3 and here I must also bring it down that is 12, 9, uh, that will be 19, 0, 0,19. And here, it will be 5, 0, 
0 comma 0 and 0 comma 0 1. Therefore, I have my probability distribution 0 1 2 3 4 and my probabilities are 0 comma 1 2 0 comma 6 3 0 comma 1 9 0 comma 0 5 and 0 comma 0 1 and you can even do more than what I'm just showing you, but I think this will be enough for you to be able to write your assignment or write your exam and everything in between. And that concludes today's session for us. Thank you for being here and for participating. There is nothing more I can share with you. Uh, we've done the expected values, the variance, the covariance, the bivariate uh, distribution, and that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem, you are welcome. Yeah, we'll be able to tackle the marginal probabilities problems now in the assignment three. Yes, you should be able to. I'm going to stop the recording.